If you're abusing substances, I think this is going to be one of the most critical videos that you're going to hear because it all comes down to personal accountability and decision making. I got two stories. I'm going to keep one vague, but one I just encountered with a friend. So my, the first story is this. My, my closest friend in high school, I have made limited contact with over the years as I've watched him deteriorate mentally. His early childhood was awful. It was a lot of trauma. His parents were really, really bad the way they fought all the time, screaming, hollering, real bad. Okay, dad was a drunk. Mom was a moon bat, crazy. She's out there. Astrology, all that nonsense. Psychopath. They got divorced. Thank God for them, right? Well, when he was in 11th grade, his sister was in 6th grade and she died of cancer. A couple of years later, after we got out of high school, his mom died of the same thing. And since then, I've watched him just plummet to the point where he just got fired from Foot Locker at 41 years old. And the last job he was doing was something equally worthless as a 41-year-old with nothing. And what he does is because of his astrology and his early childhood trauma, now he's not a substance abuser, but it's related, he blames everyone else for his problems based on some woo-woo nonsense like astrology, okay? And so when I was talking to him today, all I heard was excuses, blaming everybody else for his problems, not taking any accountability, and basically telling me I'm delusional because I'm telling him, dude, if everywhere you go, you get fired and you blame everyone else, there's probably like one constant here and it's you. So if you don't want to put in the hard work in life, then you're going to consistently be in the situation where you're scraping by because you tell me you can't work and you just refuse to work. And the whole point of this is I really do believe that a lot of substance abusers, if you really peel away what's going on, is you're dealing with early childhood trauma that has gone unresolved. And that's people that didn't put in the work in therapy and self-reflect and realize, hey, man, like I, I've got to fix this. So I will say that I'm the exception with that because I did not have early tra childhood trauma that I'm aware of. Um, any trauma was created by me because I was, I was always the wild kid that didn't want to obey authority, right? For whatever reason. But my buddy in this conversation, I outlined for this astrology channel, my look, dude, three shorts a day, one video a day. You can chop that up, make your shorts. Just do that for a year straight and you'll be surprised how well you do. Even if the content's not perfect, you'll figure it out. And he said, yeah, I don't want to work that hard. Well, dude, you just got fired from Foot Locker making like 12 bucks an hour and you're 41 years old. You have nothing. You're living in your dad's basement. And he believes he's entitled to all of his dad's possessions when he dies simply for the fact that his dad wasn't a great father. So that type of mentality, I have very little patience for. And at the end of the conversation, I basically told him, look, you know what, dude? You went to therapy, multiple therapists, and you said they were all crazy and didn't know what they were talking about. And the reason why was because they told him what he needed to do to start making changes in his life, and he didn't want to pin in the effort. And if you're an alcoholic or a substance abuser, and you keep making excuses, then you're never going to stop with your abuse because only you can fix you there are there's help out there to be had whatever path you take i can't remark on that okay we all have a different journey in self-improvement but if you don't accept the fact that you have a problem and you need to fix it and only you have the willpower to do it then how are you going to be successful because if you run around life blaming everybody else you're never going to fix yourself now the other party i know I have great respect for this man. He's one of the most talented people on YouTube and he crushes it. And I'm not going to get into his backstory because first of all, it's not my place to, to share that, but he had it way harder than my other buddy. And this dude went through therapy for years and years and years. And he had the self-determination. And I mean, he went through way worse. Okay. And he's driven and he has a healthy life. He's, I, I respect this man. And if you're watching this, you, you know I love you, buddy. I respect this man more than any other man I've ever met in my life because I know his backstory and I know how dedicated and strong he is to do all the things he wanted to accomplish in life and still has more to do and he's going to do it. He's the most driven person I've ever known. And the difference here is he accepted the help when he needed it because he knew he needed the help and he did what they told him to do and it worked. So for the people that don't believe that therapy works, I can tell you that when I've gone to therapy, the only reason the first time it didn't, I knew what the guy was telling me was right, but I didn't want to do the work. I didn't want to quit drinking. Even though when I did it temporarily that one time when my wife and I were going through therapy, it, it was the right thing to do. 
but you know what? I was weak and selfish and I didn't want to listen. But if you want to fix yourself and you put the hard work in, you will succeed. I promise you that. You have the power inside of you to succeed. So you got two stories here. You got a guy who had a pretty rough childhood and you got a guy who had a way worse childhood. And what's the difference? Personal accountability. One person wants to blame everybody else, refuses to fix his problems. And the other guy said, you know what? I know I'm broken, but I need help. And I'm going to get that help. And he stuck with it. Years and years of therapy. I don't know if he's still in therapy. I don't talk to him about it. But And now he's super successful and that's all you need to know. And that kind of person I respect because, and we don't agree on everything. That's fine. But that kind of person is the person that says, oh, and by the way, he quit drinking alcohol too. In fact, when he quit drinking alcohol, I was mad at him when I was still drinking because I thought, there goes my drinking buddy. I'm not going to have anything in common with him anymore. I was mad at one of my closest friends I've ever had because he bettered himself. That's how poisonous alcohol is. And so thank God I've cleaned myself up and gone sober because now I can see everything clearly. And so will you if you, first of all, admit you have a problem, make the decision to fix it, and accept the help when it's offered. And then whatever that help is, implement what they tell you. Otherwise, you're going to end up like my buddy working at Foot Locker, being a complete loser. And I'm sorry to say it, but I'm never going to talk to him again because there's no fixing that. But I will say this. I do not have experience with early childhood trauma, but I do have two anecdotal experiences. So no, I can't remark on it personally, but what I can tell you is from my own personal reflections from two people that I know intimately over these years, and I know them very well, which, 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 which way would you choose? Would you choose to stay in the same rut that you're in and blame everybody else? Or would you know that you need to fix what, you're, what, you're, what ails you and go for it and come out on the other side stronger and better and live a life full? So that's what I want for you guys. I want you to join me and live a full life and put in the hard work to become a better person and get away from the substances because there's no going back. I'm just telling you, there's no going back. Even at six months, there's no going back. Love you guys.